So there are three types of space-time intervals. Time-like, light-like, and space-like, corresponding to different signs of delta s squared. In the previous video, we talked about time-like intervals. And so in this video, we'll talk about space-like intervals. And this is um, new in the sense that we haven't considered space-time intervals um, for this case yet. All right, so time-like and space-like. So for a space-like interval, we have delta s squared equals zero. So that means that this quantity on the right-hand side is negative. Before going on, um, I want to mention that like seeing delta s squared being equal to a negative number can be unsettling, because um, it suggests there might be imaginary numbers lurking around. So often one defines, basically just makes it positive. So that's a sigma, a Greek lowercase sigma. And this quantity is known as the space-time separation. <clears throat> All right, so let's do what we did before and try to get some picture for how this might work. What does this look like? So let me draw. Um, a little space-time diagram over here. I've got x and t. Okay. So delta s is negative. That means that this term is bigger than that term. Right? This term is bigger, so that gives a negative number. So one way this could happen would be if delta t or delta t or delta t and delta t squared. If this is zero, then definitely um, this is negative. So um, remember again, the space-time interval is the interval between two points in space-time. And so um, this case would look like this. And this is a case where delta t is zero. So in that special case, we've got these two space-time events they have the same time, they happen simultaneously. The only thing different between these two space-time events is that they have a different x-coordinate. So we could measure this as a length. Two simultaneous measurements um, are purely spatial. So this definitely seems to be space-like. But what about a more general situation? So let me draw that over here. Let's see, so again, x and t. And now suppose that the two events in the unprimed frame maybe look like this. So this is still space-like. Delta x is larger than delta t. So that means we're going to have a larger number here. That's going to make this thing negative. So this is still um, a space-like separation. So, um, but in this case, the um, delta, uh, delta t is not zero, right? So A and B are not purely space-like in that sense. But there's a reference frame, a moving reference frame, in which um, which would look like this. So there's some reference frame, wherever b is over here, as long as it's below the light flash. So this is just separating um, space-time into two regions. Anything in here is going to have a delta x greater than delta t. And if that's the case, I can always find some reference frame. There's some other reference frame where A and B are along the x prime axis. And so that means that A and B are simultaneous in the blue frame, in the primed frame. And if they're simultaneous, then we can think of this just as a length, uh, right? Two simultaneous measurements. And so we could measure this simply with a ruler. There's no, there wouldn't even need to be a clock involved. So even if we're over here, it's still space-like in that there's some reference frame in which the um, um, 
space-time interval is purely spatial, can be measured only with a ruler. So the last thing to think about a little bit is the following. So we've seen that delta s squared, the space-time interval, is frame independent. And we argued that because the operational definition of a space-time interval was it's the clock reading measured by a single clock present at both events. But here, there's a problem with that definition because it's impossible for the same clock to be at event A and at event B. The reason for that is that in order to get from A to B, you would have to travel faster than the speed of light, and that's impossible. Right? Delta x is larger than delta t. That means that this speed would be larger than 1, larger than the speed of light. So um, the question then is, is this still frame independent, meaning all observers would agree on it, even if the original argument for why the space-time interval was frame independent doesn't hold in this case? The answer to that question is yes. And the way you would show that is you would have coordinates for um, event A, which would be 0, 0, and then coordinates for event B. And you could then calculate the space-time interval. Um, so you've got coordinates for events A and B. Use a Lorentz transformation to transform them from the primed frame into the unprimed frame. Calculate the space-time interval again and you'll get the same thing. So the way to show that this is frame independent is to show that this quantity doesn't change under a Lorentz transformation. That's a bit of algebra to do. It's not particularly hard, but I also don't think it's... you would necessarily gain intuition by watching me do that. Um, I'll probably make that an optional homework problem if you want to work through. It's six, seven lines of algebra, nothing crazy. But again, the main point is that the Lorentz transformations applied directly to these points shows that this is indeed a f this is indeed a frame independent quantity. You can think of delta s squared or delta sigma squared. Observers in different reference frames will agree on its value. So let's summarize the main features of space-like intervals. So again, space-like intervals refer to the interval between two points in space-time, two events in space-time. And if that interval is space-like, meaning this is negative, then that means there's a reference frame in which those two events occur at the same time. So here are two events. In the unprimed frame, they're not simultaneous, but I can find a frame in which they are simultaneous. And so then in this frame, in this special frame, the lengths between those events is just delta sigma. Right? There's no delta t prime here, just delta x prime, so it's purely spatial, hence space-like. And we can measure it with a ruler. We wouldn't need a clock, because we know that a and b are simultaneous. And then delta sigma, or delta sigma squared, delta s squared, this quantity is frame independent. And um, that's not an immediately obvious statement, because when uh, we defined the space-time interval, we defined it in terms of a single clock present at two events. That argument doesn't work here. Instead, we can apply the Lorentz transformations to the space-time coordinates for A and B, calculate the um, delta S squared or delta sigma squared in one frame, use the Lorentz transformations to translate them into another frame, calculate this again, and you'll get the same value. So these are the properties of space-like intervals.